Welcome back guys, my name is Victor from <laughs> the Open Code and today we're going to be looking at dependency injection with COIN. So what is COIN? So COIN is the dependency injection framework for Kotlin and Android developers. So what does that mean? So we have three classes in here all defined in Kotlin if you noticed. We have a student class, a school course class as well as a friend class. So a student can have a school course, so obviously students can take courses and a student can have a friend class. So we define those inside the student class and we're able to call a function be smart, which will call course.study so you can student can study a course as well as hang out with your friends. But the problem with this is the school course as well as the friend are very tightly coupled to the student class. So what that means is each time, so say you want to create another student class, you're forced to use the school course as well as a friend, as this friend. So maybe you wanted to use a super friend or like a best friend or something like that. You can't do that. You're forced to use this friend. So wouldn't it be great, okay, rather than defining our dependencies inside the class like this, we could provide them in our constructor and then just have them injected for us? Well, I think it would be. So that's where COIN comes in. So COIN is the dependency injection framework that helps you manage your dependencies rather than creating them inside the class yourself. So you tell COIN what you want to create, how to create it, and you can just request those dependencies whenever you need them. So if you've ever worked with Dagger, it's fairly similar to that, but takes less code to set up and to understand. So let's go ahead and take a look how we get set up. So the first thing we need to do in our build.gradle file, so this is our we go into our app level build our gradle file and we add these two dependencies one for coin android and coin view model next we have to tell coin how to provide these dependencies so we want it to provide the student class the school course as well as this friend so in here we would define a file we create a new kotlin class called modules make it a class or no maybe not a class and we would define a variable in here called our app module it's equal to a function and inside this coin modules function that's where we define our dependencies so the first dependency we want to define is the one for our school course so similar to the way we just created a, an instance of a class we define school course as well as a dependency for friend but for coin to understand these dependencies we have to scope them so what does scoping mean so scoping means providing a duration or a lifetime of the object so say for example you have an object that you only want to create it once and each time you request that object you want that exact same instance so a singleton then you have to tell coin about that so in here we can make our school course a singleton by using the single keyword or the single function rather and what that means it's, it's going to define a singleton of type school course okay and the next one say for friend we want to define this as a factory so we use the factory keyword and what does factory mean it means each time I request this instance of the friend class, create a new instance every single time. So the last thing we need to define in here is our student class. So import that, and we can define this with either the single keyword or the, the factory keyword. So let's go ahead and, and let's make this a factory. Why not? And similar to this, it's just going to create a new instance every single time. Okay. So what we've done in here is we've told coin how those dependencies are going to be created and the scope of those using single factory. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is tell coin about those dependencies. He knows how to create them, but it doesn't know about them yet. So to do that, we go into our project and we create an application class. Let's call it my app. I know. <laughs> you get creative with the names here, but mm, let's stick with my app. Okay. And let's make this an instance of our application class. And remember, whenever you define an application in your manifest, you have to declare that in here. So you call that my app, if that's what your app is called, just use whatever your app name is. So now let's go ahead and we create an onCreate function. So what we need to do now is essentially start coin. So we need to tell coin, hey, we're about to start and these are our dependencies. So to do that, we say start coin. And the first thing coin needs is access to your application. So your Android context, and you tell it, hey, my Android context is essentially this class or this instance of my class at my application. And the other thing coin needs to know about are the modules. So to do that, we can also specify modules. And this uh, requires a list of modules. So we can say list of. And the first thing, or you know, obviously the modules to define in our app module, which is what we called it, and that's where we had all these class definitions. 
So now that coin knows about our dependencies, we need to go back in here where we define our student class and take these out. So rather than doing in here define the dependencies in line, we define these in our constructor now. And we can take these two out. And in our modules class, this student class requires two dependencies. So how does coin know where the dependencies are coming from? Well, we already defined them in here in our app module as the singleton as well as this factory dependency. So all we need to say here is get and because coin already knows about them, it's just going to inject them for us. So back in our main activity, so usually in here we'd say val student and we want to create an instance of our student class. Okay, but then it requires these two dependencies. This is the way we're doing it before and we don't want to do it that way anymore. So rather than doing this, we just say, because we've already told coin about our dependencies, we can just say get and we tell we want the instance of the student class and coin would know how to provide it for us. So on this student class, what we can do is call student.besmart and coin is going to inject this dependency and then we're going to call the be smart function on this. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here to make sure everything's working properly. And fingers crossed. All right, so we step into this and great. So we have a student here. So coin has injected the student at memory location five, oops, 5016 and so that tells us we have an instance of our student class and we can look in here as soon as a course and a friend which means it's working properly and we can call be smart on that great so let's think about our scoping which we had talked about earlier the singleton scope the factory scope our student was defined with a factory scope so that means each time we call student or get it should give us a new instance of the student class so let's go ahead and make sure that's also working properly so in here we define student 2 and call student2.besmart. So that tells us each time we call this get, it should return a different instance of our student class. So let's also run this again and make sure it's working properly. We'll step into this. So the first student is at memory location 5016, and then the next one is at 5017, which makes perfect sense and it's exactly what we want because we define student as a factory dependency. And the other thing we did was define the school course as a singleton. So that means each time the student's being created with a school course, we should get the same instance of school course. And if we look in here, we have the first school course at memory location 5018, and then the next one at the exact same memory location, which makes sense because we define this as a single, which means it's a singleton of type school course. So now that everything's working properly, let's recap. So in this video, we've learned how to inject our dependencies with coin. We provided them in this module called our app module, and we told coin about them using the start coin block. Okay, so each time now we want the dependency, all we need to do is call get and provide the type, and then coin will just inject it for us. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to inject a view model as well as lazy dependency injection. So stick around for the next one, and we'll see ya. Peace!